This is the torch dance of the Kui people. It depicts a scene of their ancestors working at night with torches lit. The Kui is an ethnic minority who live mainly in Kampong Tom province in central Cambodia. The Kui people do not have their own written language. They record their history through songs and dances. There are fewer than 50,000 Kui people in Cambodia, but the history of this ethnic group is a remarkable one. The Kui is one of the oldest ethnic groups in the country. According to records, they mastered iron smelting about 1,000 years ago. They forged weapons for the Khmer people, who wielded power throughout the Indochinese peninsula and made great contributions to the building of the Angkor Empire. Today, knife forging is still one of their traditional handicrafts. The Kui people use the mempat as the raw material for the hilt of the knife. Every time before going hunting or logging, they first ask for permission from the gods. The mempat is hard, tough, precious, and very suited for carving. But the Kui people are more interested in the curved shape of its root, as a knife with a curved hilt is more powerful. There are many types of Kui knives, but the most common is this long knife with a curved hilt. It can be used both as a weapon and a farming tool. The last phase of the Kui knife production process is flower carving. The rose patterns carved on the hilt resemble eyes, implying that it can hit its targets more accurately. More than 1,000 years ago, the Kui people did not follow the Khmer to settle in cities. Instead, they have passed down their handicrafts and remained in the land that has raised them. Yuan Yujie and his colleagues are on their way to an ancient temple at the top of a mountain. In 889, Yasovarman I, king of the Angkor Empire, set his sights on the Dangrek Mountains and ordered the construction of the Preabvyar Temple at the top of Poi Tadi Cliff. but he didn't live to see this temple in its final form. It was only 200 years later, in 1152, that the temple was finally completed. During the long period of its construction, the Angkor Empire had 13 kings. When the Angkor Empire fell, the Priyavihar temple was abandoned on this piece of land. <laughs> Fifty-eight-year-old Yuan Yujie is from the Chinese Academy of Cultural Heritage. He is a top specialist in the restoration of ancient architecture. Today, his task is to complete an initial survey before restoring the Priyavihar Temple. The first step is finding out the geological reasons behind the temple's collapse. They are using a radar vehicle. It uses electromagnetic waves to scan the conditions of the foundation. 
石头垫的比较多，土层比较少，那么它就硬一点。对对对。土多的地方呢，可能变形就会大一点。对对对,对。然后这种就,就,就是等于是不均匀。对，它这是不均匀，实际上就是一个非均匀地基导致了它差异的沉降，是这样一个问题。There are five structures in the Priyarvihar temple, and they all lie along an 800 meters long north-south axis, with an east-west span of 400 meters. Back then, the Khmer people leveled almost an entire hill to build this stone temple. The second step involves measuring all the details of the temple. Measurement data will also be taken from the tens of thousands of stones used to construct the Priyarvihar temple. This is when the three-dimensional ground-based laser scanner comes in handy. Firstly, the team placed plastic balls made of special reflective material at eight locations in a single site. Then they make a 360-degree laser projection and acquire the data from the ground through software measurements and calculations. Up in the air, a drone takes omnidirectional pictures of the temple at a rate of one picture per second. The drone will take over 100,000 pictures, forming a three-dimensional image of the temple in true scale. Despite the invaluable support of modern technology, manual measurements are still indispensable. The Priyar Vihar Temple is not the first piece of architecture that Cambodia has restored with China's assistance. For the last 20 years, China has helped Cambodia repair the Chao Se Taivoda Temple and the Ta Kiao Temple as well as some other sites. But none were as difficult to repair as the central hall of the Priyavihar temple. Priyavihar means Palace of God in the Khmer language, and the central hall is its core. Apart from the front hall, the other parts of the structure have collapsed into hundreds of stones. Once the official restoration starts, the stones will be moved into different positions. Before that, Yuan Yujie must find out how the stones fit together. Every On the last day of the survey, the team see the first rain during their stay in Cambodia. Over the next 10 years, they will no doubt get used to the alternating dry and wet seasons on this land. Ratana has been very busy recently. He needs to finish treating this rawhide before the wet season arrives. The rawhide needs to be dried in the scorching sun for a week, then stored and colored for two months before it becomes the perfect raw material for him to use. 
carving delicate hollowed patterns on processed cowhide is a traditional leather carving art in Cambodia. The themes of almost all the works are related to the country's history and myths. Adding gold paint will turn them into superior artworks. 46-year-old Ratana has been learning leather carving since he was very young. In 2002, he established his own workshop right opposite the Priyako. Many children learn leather carving from him. The elder children have studied it for many years, and some of the younger children are not even 10 years old. They all address Ratana the same way. Ratana's apprentices are all orphans he has adopted. They named the workshop the Angel Leather Carving Orphanage. Ratana's biggest concern is how to feed the children. When he first started this workshop, he had no plans to turn it into an orphanage. The children that live in Sri Lake, and then they ask, uh, they go to see my carving every day. I ask him, you don't go to school? He said that, no. Why? Because he, uh, uh, I often, I live with my grandmother. My grandmother old. And then I'm remind my life. I said that when I was young, I need go to school, but I'm often I cannot. If uh, I want to go to school, my brother cannot go to school. I told them to stay with me, and then second school, they're happy to go to school. First time, I told only five children. <laughs> five more, 10, 35, uh, 55. Ratana spends most of his time teaching students how to make leather carvings. <laughs> I know only that one. I take them, I say that I don't have uh, anything to take more, but it must uh, this one, so you must learn from me. Eight, eight, uh, uh, and eighteen. After growing up, many of his previous students come back to help. But I come back and also I can teach them and I can do homework here also. I just share my knowledge from school. When I have learned before, I need to share for them as English and computer also. Knives of different sizes are used for leather carving. To save on costs, the children use knives made of scrap iron that they made themselves under Ratana's guidance. When I met him, I, 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 I took my student and do together. I would like to know, uh, to, 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 to all them to know uh, when they can go out from here. He can take anything from me about uh, uh, I'm teaching to them. Nhóm kết tha, kết chơi mình nó lọ, hay mình nó đại chơi chặt chui nè đầu tì. Mình nó đại chặt lọ, sờ lại bộ nhóm, trang ao bộ nhóm, bảo bắt đầu vay để lọ, nâng mẹ anh ta kết rung rừng tật ngày một. The orphanage survives partly from social donations and partly from sales of leather carvings. Ratana encourages the children to save their money to pay for college in the future. Sometimes visitors will come even if the place is closed. But the children will still take out their leather carvings for them to look at. Even a small pendant brings an income. Ratana became an orphan when he was 10. This is the 16th year he has been running the orphanage. He uses his leather carving skill to fill the gaps in the children's lives.
March is the peak season for the garment manufacturing industry, as the coming spring is the peak season for sales in the Northern Hemisphere. A Chinese enterprise invested in and built this garment factory. Cambodian staff and the management team from China are going through an intense production period. Human beings have been making garments for thousands of years. Although automation now makes up many links in the modern clothing manufacturing chain, manual craft is still the most important resource in this industry. The Hodo Group from China not only brought their production technology and management model to Cambodia, but also invested in the construction of Cambodia's first special economic zone, Sihanoukville. This industrial park is learning from China's experience, which means that knowing the Chinese language is crucial. Thirty-year-old Shi Rongke is a Chinese teacher in the Sihanoukville special economic zone. Most of Suronka's students are workers who have just finished work and children who live near the factory. Suronka's course lasts three months and for one hour each day. The environment within the special economic zone is very conducive for learning the language. But whether students can master Chinese depends on their efforts after each lesson. Okay. So, Shi Rongke's wife is also a teacher. Soon after they got married, his wife went to work in Karachi, Pakistan, over 4,000 kilometers away, with a time difference of two hours. I就是说我在这个汉语教学过程当中体验到的这种成就感 Hamilton was here, you
Shironka can only start his class after his students get off work. As a result, he misses dinner at the canteen, so most of the time he has to eat alone. Twelve kilometers away from the special zone is the Sinukville Autonomous Port. Shirwonka's wife visited him in the first year he was assigned here. Over the past three years, they have only had one month of vacation to see each other each year. With the globalization of trade, the demand for Chinese language teaching has grown, and there are tens of thousands of teachers like Shi Ronka working around the world. It is his persistence and that of countless experts and craftsmen that allow the skills and creations of those who came before us to continue long into the future. <laughs>